Today I'm going to talk about scientific notation. It is sometimes called exponential notation, and that's why on your calculator it's actually uh, represented as this EE, which is above the comma right there, comma button. Um, on some calculators they actually have an EE button and you don't have to hit the second first to get to it. So with scientific notation, it's just a way of representing very large and very small numbers so that you don't have to write them all the way out, which can be a problem if you're talking about something like number of atoms or mass of one atom or something that's very, very tiny or very, very large, like the distance from here to the sun. Those are things that would be very large or very small numbers. For example, if we had this number, and we had to use this in a math problem, let's say it is meters, then writing that out over and over as you're working through the math problem is silly. And when you have to uh, see if it's the right answer or not, you're going to have to count your zeros to figure out how big that number is or put in commas between every three, which can be also misleading because in Europe they use commas as decimals. So that gets a little confusing. So what we want to do is we want to represent this in a way that is more concise. And so all the zeros, we're going to collapse those down and we're going to get going to, we're going to keep the three digits which are not zeros. So we're going to keep 6, 9 and 5. And we're going to say it's times 10 and we have to count how many places we move this decimal point. So the decimal point is starting here at the end of the number. And so we moved it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine places. And the reason that we move it to that space between the six and the nine is because when a number is in proper scientific notation, there should only be one digit to the left of the decimal point. So we moved our decimal from here nine places to this location right here. So that's where it ends up. You want only one digit to the left of that decimal. You count how many places you moved it. And since it's a big number, you're going to have a positive exponent and then your units go after that. So all of this is the same as that number. Let's try a pro couple of practice problems. You can pause the video here if you'd like to work out the problems on your own and then hit play to check your answers. Okay, here are four numbers that we want to put into scientific notation. So we're going to put 4.5 so that we only have one digit to the left of our decimal and then we have to count how many places we have to move it to get it there. So one, two, three, four places. So it's going to be times 10 to the fourth power. And if we had a unit on that, liters, kilometers, whatever, we would put that at the very end after the times 10 exponent. Our next number really wouldn't need to be in scientific notation probably because it's already a pretty small number, but to do what we need to do, we would have three times 10 and our decimal starting here we're moving it one place so it'd be times 10 to the first power which is just 3 times 10 which is 30. 150 again we want to move that decimal so it's 
in such a place that there's only one number to the left of the decimal place and we had to move it one, two places. So we say times 10 to the second power. Be sure not to write this. That is not the same thing. Make sure that you put the times 10 to the second power. So what do you do if your teacher's demanding that you put a number into scientific notation and the decimal is already between the first and second digit, there's already only one digit to the left of it. Well, we don't have to move it in either direction. So we're gonna say times 10 to the zero power. Anything to the zero power is equal to one. So basically we're saying 1.2 times one, which is silly, but if your teacher wants you to understand this concept, he or she may want you to be able to do that. Next, let's try some small numbers. If you have a small number like this, notice the decimal's already way over here. Well, we wanna have one non-zero digit to the left of the decimal. So this time, we're gonna to have to move it in this direction. So we're moving it to the right until we get to a non-zero digit, and that's where it's gonna go. So it has to have just one digit to the left of the decimal point, times 10, and this time we moved it one, two, three, four places, but we moved it to the right this time. So we're gonna put a negative four exponent. So a negative exponent tells you it's a very small number. If you have a positive exponent like the first set we did, then that's a very large number. So let's practice a few of these. So here's a set to practice. You may want to pause it here, see if you can figure out the answers, and then check. For our first example, we want the decimal to be between the first two non-zero digits, so 1.23. We moved it one, two, three places, so times 10 to the negative three because we it's a small number and we had to move it to the right. Next one, we're gonna move it over just one spot. So we have 7.7, .7. again, we want just one digit to the left of the decimal. We only had to move it one spot, so times 10, and it's a small number, less than one, so we moved it one in the negative direction. Our next one, we're gonna to have to move quite a ways to get to something that's not a zero. Our only non-zero thing is the two. And we have to move it one, two, three, four, five, six places. So it's to the negative sixth power. Our next number, one, is our digit and I tried to trick you, hopefully you caught this. This is a big number, a thousand is bigger than one. So this time we're moving our decimal to the left. One, two, three, so it's a positive three. And our last one, again we're gonna have one. This time we're moving it one, two, three to the right, so it's a negative three power. So do you see the difference between those two? This one has a positive exponent and it was a big number. Greater than one. And this one is a little teeny tiny number and it has a negative exponent. So small number, negative exponent. Big number, positive exponent. 
Now let's try going the other way. Let's try taking numbers out of scientific notation and writing them in regular notation. Okay, for our first example, we have 3.5 times 10 to the second power. So that is gonna be equal to three, five, zero. We had to move this, notice positive exponent, so big number, and we have to move it one, two places. So we put a zero in here and it becomes 350. And if you wanna double check yourself, you can always go backwards. You had to go one, two over, so it'd be 3.5 times 10 squared, which matches your original number. But this is the number out of scientific notation. Let's try another one. 4.1 times 10 to the fourth power. So this time, we're gonna have four, one, that's one place, but we have to move it four, so we have to move it two, three, four. Notice again, it's a big number because we have a positive exponent. Also another little trick, if you only have like one digit that you have to move it past, then your zeros, you'll have three zeros, your power was four, because the first one was the one, and then you need three more spots. So this would be our answer, our expanded number written out of scientific notation. All right, let's say we have 1.2. Notice there's always just one digit to the left of the decimal when it's in scientific notation. Let's say we have times 10 to the negative three power. So this time it's negative. So this is gonna be a little number. So this time we're gonna to have to move our decimal this way. So the first move, we'll put it in front of the one, but we have to move it three times. So two, three, and we're gonna fill in here with zeros. So it's gonna become zero, zero, one, two. Started here, we moved it one, two, three to the left. So this would be our number out of scientific notation. Notice it's a teeny tiny number and we had a little negative exponent here. I hope this has helped. Tune in for future videos.